What's up Covalence friends? Today we're going through what I like to call an advanced beginner tutorial. It's advanced in the sense of knowing when and why you would want to do something like this in an application, but it's beginner in just knowing what we're doing and how we're doing it. So anyone with basic HTML and CSS knowledge will be able to replicate what we're doing and understand it, but knowing why you'd want to do this, it might take you know some application building and just seeing different use cases as to why you'd actually want to do this in your application. But we're going to be working with a single layout that uses the same code base for both mobile and desktop and have it scale well on different mobile devices, but then also be responsive for larger desktop applications. So for now, just sit back, relax, and enjoy while we get into it. All right, let's go ahead and create our index.html. And we'll create a styles.css file as well. And we're only going to be working with CSS today. So it's kind of nice. No JavaScript. And we'll call this responsive scaling because that's basically what this is. And we're going to link some CSS and we're going to add our S to that because that's the name of our file. And inside of our body, let's go ahead and just create a div. And then inside of this div, we're going to create a bunch of blocks. So we're going to create nine blocks, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, so we have nine blocks. And we're basically just going to treat these blocks as if they're widgets or items on the page. Uh, they could be images, whatever they are. Um, we're going to just have essentially a grid here. And the grid might span the entire width of the screen, but as the screen shrinks and grows, we want to have some sort of response of scaling, right? And so there's different use cases for this, but the use case we're going to use is that on a phone, we want it to be basically a three by three grid, right? But at a certain break point, we want it to just scale out and we don't want that grid to stay that size the entire time, right? It might look kind of wonky with this huge three by three grid. So at a certain size, we're going to change that and the layout's going to actually change. But at some point, we want it to stop actually breaking we don't want it to just be single blocks all the way down and so there are frameworks that can do this bootstrap tailwind you know they have a lot of these uh classes that you can use but if you don't want to use those like, i mean they're kind of bulky and you don't really have to for for a lot of use cases right and so you can see how simple something like this can actually be uh, with just a little bit of css um, but we're going to start with the body here and so we're going to say margin zero and we're going to just give a little bit of padding all the way around and we're going to be working with M's and you're going to see why because of this whole responsive scaling idea. And so um, the body itself we have defined oh, and then we're going to have the block defined and we're going to do a background color. Let's do dodge blue. Everybody loves dodge blue. Easy to look at uh, color white. So we're going to have white numbers in there. Let's align those numbers in the center. And let's do padding three M's again, working with M's uh, for the font size scalability, right? So we're gonna actually be adjusting font size to do this. And um, let's see, margin, let's say uh, 0.5 M's. And uh, let's give it a border, why not? One PX solid blue. So a little bit darker than the, uh, the inside. And uh, that'll just kind of be for making it look good but okay so let's go ahead and just kind of see what this looks like real quick so we're going to pop this open open it up in a browser and so we can kind of see that um, you know we have these blocks and they're divs so they span the whole width of the screen so everything's working essentially how it's supposed to work right um, but we want this thing to be a grid so how can we do this well you know you can do inline block there's certain things wrong that happen with inline block that I don't like so in my mind, the best way to do this uh, for simple use cases like this would be to use a float. So we're actually going to float these blocks left. And so if we go ahead and we refresh this page, you can now see that we have these little squares. And um, or I guess they're kind of rectangles. But again, um, as you kind of shrink and grow this screen, we can kind of see that it is responsive. And as the screen gets smaller, right, it changes from a two by you know, whatever grid all the way up. But essentially what we want is we want this grid here to kind of stop doing this once we get smaller. We don't want it to ever go down to two rows, right? So once it gets to three, we basically want it to stop doing this, right? And then, you know, as it gets more, it can, you know, we can change that way, but 
we, we might want it to grow as you know the screen size gets above 500 pixels but once it gets down to this three by three grid we may want it to just start shrinking with phone size right so this 400 pixel mark kind of looks pretty good um, we can play with that a little bit uh, you know again that's going to be trial and error but let's judge it. let's base it off of 400 pixels right now right and so what we can actually do to stop this from happening is that we can actually scale everything based off of uh, viewport width, which is an interesting way to do things. Now, again, this might not be for every use case, but I do generally like when I'm when I'm developing something for a mobile site that also goes into desktop. I'd like keeping the base font size of the body based off of viewport width units. So um, let's do 3.5 viewport width, right? units real quick and just see what happens when we do this right so if we refresh this page um, we can now see that as this thing scales it maintains that ratio so as it gets bigger and bigger right everything scales based off of viewport units or viewport width units right so it's kind of a, it's a pretty cool effect right and this may not be great for applications where again like if it gets too big, right? This looks kind of ridiculous. Like, I mean, all of a sudden your widgets are huge, your text is huge. Um, so at a certain break point, you actually need to change this back to being pixels or a different unit of measurement, right? So again, let's keep this open so that we can scale this window. And what we can do is a lot of times people can accomplish the same thing we're trying to do using a bunch of media queries, but we're gonna stick to using just a single media query. And so what we're going to do is we're going to define our media query. Uh, let's just say 500 pixels for now. And we're going to change the body font size to be 18 pixels. All right. So now at 500 pixels, the whole behavior of this application is going to change. So let's go down below 500 pixels. We're gonna refresh the page. And now you can see as we get to 500, all of a sudden it now treats it more like a responsive app instead of a scaling app, right? But under that 500, it now scales. So on devices that are under 500 pixels, it's going to always have this three by three grid. But then when you get bigger than 500, it's going to scale out and allow our widgets, our images, whatever this is, text blocks to again, completely just go horizontal, right? All the way, so it becomes a row, all right? So it's an interesting dynamic. It works really well for a lot of applications and you can use this for, um, again, feed style apps. You can use it for widget style apps, dashboards, and it's pretty versatile and something that I always generally like to do for apps that are supposed to scale and use the same code base from mobile all the way up to, you know, giant jumbotrons. <laughs> Uh, now, one thing I will say, there's one big caveat to this, and especially, well, it's actually a big caveat to using floats, and that's that our body itself is only this 18 pixel height here. So if you actually were to put content under this, right, so our div here is zero pixels high, um, which is a float issue, right? It actually pulls uh, the floated elements outside of um, the the layout of this parent, right? So the parent itself doesn't recognize these children as having, it really doesn't even recognize these children, period. And so the height of this div is actually zero pixels, right? Which could cause some problems if for say, uh, we wanted to come into here and we wanted to add, you know, a section underneath with um, some content. Let me grab some lorem ipsum text right here. So I have some lorem ipsum text. Um, we're just going to kind of throw that in there and we're going to refresh the page and we're gonna see what happens, right? So we can see all this text kind of just falls in wherever it can, right? It recognizes these as existing, but then it just kind of drapes itself around it, right? And so the real way to handle this with floats, and this is just kind of like a little bonus material, um, would be doing something called a clear fix, which you may have actually seen this being used places, um, but what you would actually do is you would have, you would wrap all of your floated elements in a class, and we'll just call it clear fix for consistency sake. And we're going to go ahead and define this clear fix. And basically all it is, is uh, we're clearing the content. So um, we're going to say clear both. Um, and actually, 
Ironically enough, the way the clear fix works is it's not, it doesn't actually work on the clear fix itself. It works on a pseudo element. So the pseudo element, if you look it up on MDN, uh, it's basically every element, every div itself can actually have a before and after pseudo element. And so what you do is you actually use this pseudo element to clear its children. And so you clear both, you say, you set the content equal to just nothing. And so it doesn't actually affect this clear fix div at all. It's just working on this pseudo element of the clear fix. And we'll say display block. All right, and so now if we were to, we added that class, right, clear fix, yep. And so now if we were to actually refresh this now, you can see that the content is cleared underneath this. All right, so the clear fix itself is taking up all of this space. And so the body consumes this whole area, the clear fix consumes all of the blocks. And if we scale it out, we can see that that clear fix is only consuming the area that its children are taking up. So that's extremely important. And I highly encourage you to, when you're working with floated elements and things, actually when you're working with anything, always look at your parent elements because position absolute, floating, all those things will, will always affect um, you know, the layout of your parent elements and how much space they take up. And so it's always a good idea to check your DOM, check how much, you know, the width and height of your elements and how they're affected by you know, different positioning and different uh, attributes that you're giving it inside the DOM. And so, yeah, so as we shrink this, we can actually see the text itself shrinks based off of viewport width. And M's are always based off that font size, right? And so if you were to use all M's measurements everywhere, um, you're always going to be able to scale everything based off of font size and the height and the size of these blocks and their containers are always going to be relatively the same compared to the text size, which is really nice for phones of different heights and widths, right? So everything looks very, very similar, if not identical on different screen sizes that are, you know, slightly different, which can actually look pretty bad on certain web pages. Um, you know, when you look at something on an Android device versus an iPhone device, but if you kind of do everything and scale everything like this, um, a lot of the times your applications will look identical. And I think you'll have a much more successful application in the long run. All right, so I hope you all enjoyed that. And I hope that you got to learn at least something today. Like I said, I think a beginner could definitely grasp what we were doing and how we were doing it. But understanding the why might take a little bit more experience in building applications and seeing use cases where this might be needed on particular pages. But if you have any questions or have any comments, feel free to drop them below. This is just my particular approach to solving something like this. Now, without using something like Tailwind or Bootstrap or a big library, you know, that might be bloated or unnecessary for the application that you're doing. And we try to keep it simple. We try to keep it like a beginner tutorial. And we try to show you something cool. So make sure you subscribe. If you have not subscribed already, click that button below. And if you have any ideas for future content or you want us to expand on this further, definitely let us know. Otherwise, we'll see you soon.